All right, this is not working for me at all this morning. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> it's 10 o'clock. It's Thursday. It's February 25th. It's 2021, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on, but uh, anyway. <laughs> It's time for Tom and Shane, as you know, and of course, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, how to invest your small business profits is our uh, is our topic of the day. And uh, if you're new to our channel, by all means, uh, you need to subscribe, like us and ring the notification bell. Uh, you'll always be advised of when our next podcast is and uh, leave a comment because Facebook likes that stuff. If you like us and leave comments, uh, that grows our channel, and we would really appreciate uh, any comments you could leave on Facebook and on uh, YouTube as well. Also, we're on Patreon, finally. Uh, if you'd like to become a supporter of the show monetarily, uh, we've got three levels of support uh, starting at $3 a month. And that will get you uh, either nothing, <laughs> if you so desire, or we will put your uh, name, uh, your website, your business name, whatever you want uh, on every podcast we do if you're a $3 a month supporter. And for 5 or $15 a month, uh, you get personal contact with uh, Shane and myself uh, for your business topics or business questions or personal uh, advice or whatever. So um, go to our website or go to our Patreon site. That'll be in the description below uh, when we uh, when we finish up here. So uh, don't forget to uh, look at that. And uh, some other things we got to talk about, of course, um, uh, if you're um, we're here every Tuesday and Thursday, uh, we'll take on a business topic to uh, help your small or home-based uh, or startup succeed. And for more tips, uh, you need to go to our website, TomAndShane.com. TomAndShane.com. There's a lot of uh, stuff there that we don't always cover here. A lot of articles, tips, things like that. And our business and political show is on Saturday on the radio, 8 to 11 Mountain Time. Click listen now at KMMSAM.com. Please share that with your friends. And if you missed any of our past shows, they're all at KMMSAM.com. Click on Tom and Shane's podcast. You don't have to leave any personal information. Don't have to do anything at all. And uh, that's how easy it is. So uh, uh, let's introduce our guest, Shane. Uh, we've got Mike McCormick. Uh, McCormick Financial Advisors is in the house, Bozeman, Montana. Happy to have you with us, Mike. Thanks for being here. Hey, it's my pleasure to be here, Tom. Thank you for having me, Shane. <laughs> Uh, great to see you both. Oh, the yeah. money man. Yeah. You have your own disclaimer, Mike. Uh, you sent me stuff, but I had problems printing it out. And every time I try to put it on the screen, I cancel our show. So well, let's not <laughs> go cancel at it, man. Our show. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, I think it's fine to do these disclaimers in person because really people need to understand how they're getting their financial advice these days. Uh, there is no such thing as a selfless act, says Phoebe Buffet of Friends. You need to understand people's motivations as a registered investment advisor, McCormick Financial Advisors, is liable for any advice that we give to our clients uh, not working out. We have to put their interests first. We're not allowed to take commissions from any of the investment uh, decisions that we recommend. There's no funny business. It's nice and clean and transparent. And that's the way that money management is moving these days. Uh, also, in terms of what makes us different, uh, we take that responsibility at a really high level. There's no way that I could be a fiduciary for more than 50 clients. That's really where we pin it at. And so if you're lucky enough uh, to fit in with us um, and we're lucky enough to be able to be your people, uh, know that we are on call and ready to help you with all aspects of your financial needs. We end up specializing in net worths between three and $30 million. We find that that really is a good spot for working with business owners, working with people that have uh, that have had successful financial lives and want to preserve that for um, the rest of their life, future generations, and ensure their lifestyle. So thanks for tuning in. We'll do our best to address the questions that you have. But no, if you're not one of the clients of us, uh, this advice can't be used to, to come back to us. It's just uh, good things to know. So thank you. All right. Thanks, Mike. Also, uh, full transparency, uh, Mike is not paying to be here, and Tom and Shane are not paying Mike to be here. So... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> exactly. Right. It's, it's how it should be. It's just one big happy family here. As uh, people helping people, that. Tom. That's right. <laughs> and if well, I may comment, uh, yeah. so uh, Shane's uh, uh, rules of trading 1.1. Um, all those of you that maybe were listening, I, I would strongly advise that if you've seen a hundred percent increase in any stocks that you hold, I would sell fifty percent of them. Always good to be in cash. Uh, February is the worst month in the market. We've seen this now for the last uh, week that there's been some um, ups and downs in the market and opportunities to buy. So uh, I think that could continue. There seems to be a lot of confusion in your new administration. So, uh, you know, you're at a level now that's uh, difficult to sustain, not that it won't go higher. And I'm not suggesting you do this if you feel you still want to continue investing long term. But as a cautionary uh, situation, I always consider um, how much profit is enough. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, Get the money out, you put in. Yeah. <laughs> Shaman Tobin, half man, half amazing, is in Vancouver, British Columbia. Mike and I are in Bozeman. Uh, well, Mike's in Bozeman. I'm I'm out of town. I'm outside of Bozeman, uh, three or four miles or so. But anyway, uh, we are here. And uh, what we want to talk about today with uh, Mike and Shane, uh, certainly, we want to talk about uh, the best options for investing small business profits. And uh, this is a this is something that a lot of small business owners kind of gloss over because they're tied up with getting their business going, uh, you know, getting uh, everything in order, trying to find uh, uh, clients, customers, whatever. And sometimes um, they're, they're just trying to get to the break even level, let alone <laughs> make a profit. So, but we want to talk about when you finally get to that profit. And uh, Mike, we want to start with. Um, the best options for investing, uh, if you're a, um, uh, if you're a small, uh, sole proprietor, you might be a, a handyman, a landscaper, a tutor, um, you know, some kind of, uh, real, maybe a realtor, who knows, uh, but you're, you're kind of your own, your own entity. So what are the, what, what options would you advise for sole proprietors? Yeah, thanks, Tom, uh, for setting that question up and framing it nicely, because when you put actual careers in there, uh, I think then people can really identify it. A sole proprietor, there's no there's no less value in a sole proprietor versus somebody that chose to incorporate. It's what suits you. Um, and so many people that begin in business say, you know, we're just going to keep it simple. And uh, and that works out just fine. And so in the in the nature of a sole proprietor, uh, you're really just working out of one account is the way I look at it. You make money, you spend money, you might keep uh, expenses in a spreadsheet or you might use a more sophisticated program, but pretty much you are the one entity. You yourself, uh, the accounts have your names on them or you might have a DBA, uh, but essentially in the eyes of the IRS, and this is really who the boss is on these things that we're going to be talking about today, uh, you're just one person. Um, and so when you when you operate as a sole proprietor out there, and when you're to the point of the business that you said, Tom, which is, you know, you're having success, you've been able to reinvest in the business, maybe pay down debt, and you're at a point of comfort where you say, okay, what's what's next? And really, what's next is the obvious thing, which is, when can I stop working? When, when can I stop, stop going and showing up and doing all this work? And so that means saving for retirement. And now saving for retirement is it is a surprisingly significant step for the cash that you hold as a sole proprietor it's at no risk it's fully liquid it's right there you can almost touch it even though in these days and worlds we don't touch much cash but it's as safe and liquid as it can be and what we're talking about is we're talking about moving that out to risk we're talking about saying you know we're putting money away for the future that could be 10 20 40 years maybe 50 years think about a hundred year lifespan you're going to need to pay for that last day of your life when you're 100 years old, if that's when it is. And so when you look at that math, you're looking at a really long time period out there. And when you're looking at a long time period and you want to save for retirement, the IRS has made it very affordable and provided incentives to open up a retirement account. And the individual IRA, individual retirement account, is the original one. It's one of the first stops that people go to. And it has rules about who puts money in, who owns it, and how you get money out. And this is where this whole topic's going to, is that these retirement accounts for saving for the future 
with business proceeds all have different treatments on how the money goes in, how the IRS is notified about it and how they track it and how the IRS ultimately gets paid because the IRS always gets paid. There is nothing you can do about that. You can delay it. And that's the main tool that we use, salary deferral. Uh, and you can also modulate how your pay is that we'll get into in more advanced structures. But for the sole proprietor, it's really nice just to start and keep it simple. With an IRA, you can put $6,000, seven if you're 50 or over, uh, per person into this account. And you don't have to have it tied to a business. You don't need to say, this is a business plan for my hairstylist studio or that this is tied to my real estate. You simply just need to have earned income. And so this is true for any child or college student. Uh, frequently, my clients that have kids that work, they will open up a Roth IRA for them. Now, in the context of a sole proprietor, maybe that's not enough money to save. And that's really where we get into, into saving for the future. If you're young and have a long time frame, you can save just with an IRA within those limits of the six or $7,000. And over a long period of time, you might be able to get a retirement uh, saved up. Yeah. However, frequently business owners have good years. Uh, in the area that I live, most business owners are having pretty good years unless they're in the entertainment or hospitality business, of course. And they're wanting to save more money. And maybe there's not as much time left. Maybe they are over 50 and this is a beginning time to save. And they say, you know, I know that I'm going to need a, a, a fair bit of money in retirement and $7,000 a year just isn't going to get me there. Then all of a sudden we open up a big world of other options out there, Tom. And I think that we probably need to regroup onto the next phase of, of business owner before we get into the alphabet soup that is all these different company sponsored retirement plans. All right. Shane, your thoughts? My thoughts are, is that if you're in your teens or 20s or even early 30s and you've made a decision to turn to the market, do yourself a couple of uh, favors. Rule one, have a designated computer and realize that you need at least an hour every night to spend the time to read the financial news of the day and keep copy of what's going on and be aware of how the bigger picture affects the market. Secondly, during that hour, and we're talking five to seven hours a week, you want to read historical uh, information about the market, learn about it, learn about the capitalization of companies, the number of shares out, their earnings, their profitability, and their dividends. And then finally, the great thing about the market is it's liquid, as Mike said. It's not restrictive. Uh, a lot of retirement plans in our countries are very restrictive. I don't like them. I don't recommend them. You're far better than you're far better uh, learning to manage your own money that's liquid than putting it in some lockup and ha allowing someone in a bank to use your money and pay you nothing for it. So you're far you're far better off learning on your own, uh, getting interested in things that you know, products you use, products you consume. Uh, they're all out there. It's the 21st century. You have access to all of it. It's just a matter of making the decision and then being disciplined and taking the time. All right. All right. Let's move on because, uh, well, uh, a lot of people who will be watching this uh, are mom and pop stores. Uh, they're Main Street. Uh, they've invested. Uh, maybe they borrowed against their home to start this business. Uh, they've got a lot, uh, a lot at stake. They got inventory. They got all these things, Mike. And, uh, um, you know, for them, uh, they may have kids, college funds, all sorts of things uh, play into mom and pop uh, type businesses as opposed to maybe a handyman who's single or, you know, something like that. So uh, let's talk about some best options for uh, these small businesses and uh, what to do with uh, any extra cash uh, at the end of the day. <laughs> Yeah, Tom. Well, in, in the world of the IRS, uh, there's a huge line that they establish between having employees and not having employees. Uh, and, and it's fundamental that when you have employees, uh, the Department of Labor kicks in and everybody wants to make sure that you're treating the employees fairly, uh, which is good. That's how it should be. If you don't have employees, meaning if it truly is just a mom and a pop, uh, if you're related, 
then you end up still being able to do these retirement plans for businesses and you have a lot less requirements. So you can do things such as a SEP IRA or a solo 401k. Now these words are getting word soupy. I'm going to introduce two fundamental principles in these retirement plans for saving for the future with business proceeds. And the idea is you either have a salary deferral component, and that's how that IRA works, is that if you were making $50,000 a year and you deferred $5,000 a year out of your paycheck, the IRS would look at you as just having made $45,000 that year. And that $5,000 you'd pay taxes on later when you took it out. The retirement plan also has a component, which is a profit sharing component. If profits are good in the mom and pop business, you can take a percentage of everybody's salaries and put that into a retirement account. And so these are two different ways that money can go into a retirement account, both from the individual deferring their salary and from the company saying, here's a bonus, but this is a particular bonus for your retirement and it's based on a percentage of your salary. I mentioned how employees can get in the way of some of these things, but when you're fair to everybody, there's less to worry about, of course. That's the main incentive that the Department of Labor puts in there and the IRS, of course, always gets paid. So which one's right for you? There's also a simple IRA. Now there's three flavors I just introduced here, the 401k, simple IRA, SEP IRA. These are the main formats for company sponsored retirement plans. A mom and pop business can open one, a solo proprietor can open one, and a C-Corp can open one, but there's different types of complexities that each people uh, wanna deal with and don't wanna deal with. Now, if your business is one where it's not real dependable how much make money you make. Let's say a realtor doesn't know if they're going to close all their deals this year or next year, or if it's just going to go, if there's going to be another recession and another dry period. Well, they want to have the flexibility of not putting in money until maybe the year's over because they don't know what their expenses are. They don't know what their needs are. They want that flexibility to look back. So in a mom and pop business that might have really varying profits, a SEP plan where you would do a profit sharing contribution, you'd basically say, okay, the year's over, 2020 is over. We paid our taxes. We have this much money left. How about we reward the employees with a retirement plan contribution in arrears, in the hindsight? And that can be very powerful with a SEP IRA. Now, when you're looking at the 401k or the simple IRA, that's much more, well, you defer money. There's going to be a match you're sort of on the hook for how you're making contributions for retirement plans. And that's really much more of a, of a, a longer term established business that says, you know, we're really feeling confident that this is going to be an okay year. And we'll, even after paying our expenses, we'll still be able to make our retirement plan. That's when you look at those simple and 401ks based upon what you're trying to do. Does that make sense, Tom? Makes perfect sense to me, man. <laughs> well explained. Uh, Shane, uh, uh, mom and pops in Canada, are they uh, somewhat different than they are here? Or you've, you've operated businesses in the U.S. and in Canada, both. Um, are there differences in mom and pops uh, in Canada as opposed to the U.S.? Uh, the the no, taxes no, and the, things like that? No, the, the, the taxes are somewhat different. The, uh, the, the primary due dates, everything are similar. Uh, Mike's pretty well covered it. There's two things that I would suggest to everyone uh, when they're thinking about having a, whether it's a sole proprietorship or a, a, a small business, uh, you know, doing business as or, or an LLC. Uh, I always recommended to clients um, when they've asked is that you separate banking. I don't think it's the idea that you, you have one bank knowing your business, your, your personal business, as well as your uh, franchise or uh, professional business. So, Use a separate bank for uh, um, each each area of your life, your professional life and your and your personal life, and you get two benefits from that. You get two different uh, uh, pieces of advice, or when, when you have a concern. But you know the other opportunity is competition for you because you you can uh, determine who's going to give you the uh, deal, whether it be on loaning or advice or um giving you some ideas as to how to proceed with what we're talking about today so the long term is so important and that's why picking 
uh, stocks on your own, and as we've always said, div div preferably dividend stocks, is a much better benefit for you as an individual. Um, online training is now the 21st century uh, wherewithal. 60% uh, of the people now uh, in the market are online trading for free. So there's no cost in this. Um, it's just the cost of your time and your willingness to be disciplined and uh, be excited about learning about how money can be made. All right. Well, let's move on because, uh, well, we've got uh, a couple other things here we've, we've got to talk about. Um, when you go into uh, things like limited uh, liability corporations, uh, Mike, uh, these, are, these are very simple. Um, as we've talked about before when we talked about incorporation, uh, it's probably not a good idea to be a sole proprietor because you, you're, all of your personal assets are at risk if you're a sole proprietor. Uh, a limited liability corporation is about less than 100 bucks, I think, in most states. And uh, it's a one-page form. And it creates a corporate veil between you and the business. So if you uh, hit somebody with your vehicle um, and they want to sue you, uh, only the business assets are liable. They can't come and get your home or your personal savings or things like that. So uh, if you want to uh, learn more about LLCs, I would uh, do a search on Tom and Shane, uh, No Business and Politics for our, uh, our um, uh, podcast on a corporation. So LLCs, um, yeah, you're, you're getting into uh, maybe a little more successful business here, uh, uh, Mike, that, um, you know, what do you, what do you think? Uh, uh, LLCs, of course, also a corporation, you get into tax issues. Um, the nice thing about the LLC is that your tax return goes through your personal return. You just do a Schedule C of all of your things uh, related to your business. And uh, unlike a, a, a C Corp or one of the others, you don't have uh, a separate corporate tax return. So that makes it kind of easy. But what do you think, Mike, uh, LLCs? Yeah, you, you hit upon the, the big features, which is one is liability. And, and um, that's a, a main component of why you would form an LLC. And as Tom said, it can help. Uh, basically isolate your risk in different entities. Um, the other one is has to do with taking um, advantage of some tax benefits. And this is really where the retirement planning and uh, what to do with surplus money has a lot more flexibility because when you have a, an LLC, um, you have the opportunity to pay yourself a certain salary and also take distributions from the company. Uh, and so the salary is based upon what your function is doing in the company and the and the distributions are saying, you know, I own the company and happen to make a lot of money. Um, and so I'm taking some money out. When you pay yourself a salary, the IRS gets paid. They get paid FICA, uh, FICA, Social Security, Medicare, unemployment insurance, um, and maybe some other things in your neighborhood. But it ends up as when you're your own employer, you're paying both sides. You're playing the employer side of FICA and the employee side of FICA. Roughly speaking, it's seven and a half percent aside that number changes based upon what's going on in congress and where we are in space and time but i like to use 15 percent if you're a sole proprietor of your salary is going out to those uh social services um the return on that money is difficult to calculate uh generally speaking for paying into social security after you're making about seventy-five thousand dollars a year in salary, the benefit that you're getting for paying more into Social Security goes down. There's a bend point out there. It's it's uh, tax stuff. But the gist is, when you're sole when you're a sole proprietor and you make money, it's all come to you as income and all taxable. But when you have an LLC structure, you can get different tax rates on what you're paying yourself as a salary, and what you're making, and what you're taking as distributions, as related to how do you contribute to the retirement plan. Remember, we said you can take a salary deferral component and you can take a profit sharing component. Now, when you're an LLC, you might pay yourself a small salary because you don't want to pay a lot of FICA. You, even though you might make $200,000, you might pay yourself $50,000. Your CPA is the doctor there. And you might take $150,000 as distributions. Well, that impacts how we do these calculations for these retirement plans. The simple IRA, the SEP IRA, and the solo 401k. Those are the three things that you get a choice from that most businesses do. 
And each one has its own merits based upon how you're receiving salary versus taking these distributions. And so we're getting into complexity, but once you take that leap into an LLC and you say, aha, I get to choose what I want to take as a salary, that impacts how I'm taxed, that impacts how I save. Uh, these doors all open to you and you open the opportunity to save more money and pay less in taxes. Today, again, IRS always gets paid. Yes, they do. <laughs> yeah, they a, 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 couple of little upbeat, a couple of little upbeat um, ideas that can work for you in this situation, particularly with an LLC. It's called a limited liability for a reason, liability. So when we talk about turning to the market, you want to do that personally. You don't want to do it through your, your company. That You want to maintain that and, and segregate it. And the reason that's important is because the uh, profits you can generate in the market are for you personally. They're, they're not for your company. And as Mike has pointed out, there's a lot of advantages, a lot of things you can write off to increase your profits in the company. And there's a great opportunity that's a perfect option for you. You can take a loan from your company and it could be a non-recourse loan. You write right into it. This is a non-recourse loan, meaning you have there's no guidelines or time frame uh, for you to pay it back or pay it back at all and so you can make a loan to yourself and then you can take that money and again invest it in you know your personal efforts to create equity through the market for your retirement uh, these are the kind of things that are of a, a real importance because separation of liability is significant in your personal and professional life that's for sure. Yeah. Liability is the big thing because you could lose everything. Um, and these corporation things, um, you know, depending on your size, whether or not you want to take on investors again, I would suggest you uh, do a search for our, uh, how to incorporate your business here on uh, YouTube and, and uh, past ones on, well, uh, it'd be hard. It's easier to find it on <laughs> YouTube than it would be on Facebook. So, Go to go to our YouTube site, Tom and Shane, No Business and Politics, and uh, we'll fix you up with uh, everything you need to know about corporations. Now, the other thing that comes up from time to time is that you'll go into business with somebody else, uh, Mike, and you'll be a partner. Uh, this this could be uh, like a group of dentists getting together, or it could be uh, a woodworking uh, group of uh, of guys. One guy's a good woodworker, the other guy's a good money management guy, and uh, so they they uh, put this together. So where do they fall into this uh, discussion? Great, great point, Tom. And so once you move away from just having family members as your company, uh, the mom and pop, the sole proprietor, now we have somebody else that we're not related to. Um, and that means that that uh, some options are, are close to us. The solo 401k is close to us, uh, but we still have a full-fledged 401k, and we also have the SEP IRA, and we have the simple IRA. And where we go with these just has to do with uh, making sure that you and your partner are on the same page. If the only method of putting money into your retirement account is by agreeing with your partner at the end of the year how much is available to do that, you're taking away one important aspect of saving for retirement, which is your choice. If you want to defer your salary and save money save more money than your partner. You need to have a metric where you can do that and, and they can do their thing, right? So you have two people uh, that might differ on the value of the market. Some people think that stock market's a great place to keep your money. Some people think it's a terrible place to keep your money. And as a partnership, you only get to choose one type of retirement plan for your company. And so these two components that I keep mentioning, the salary deferral, I'm getting paid a paycheck from the company and some of the money's taken out and it's put toward FICA, as we already mentioned, but some of the money's taken out and put towards my retirement plan that I would otherwise get as a paycheck. Well, that's one way to do it. And then the other one is the company says, we made good money. We want to bonus people, but we only want to bonus their retirement plans. That's the profit sharing component. So when you have a partner, unless the partner is the same age as you and the same person, same ideals, you're going to want to be able to have that flexibility of making a salary deferral. Because again, I might believe in the stock market. My partner might think it's a terrible place. He doesn't want to use company resources to promoting stock market investment. Then you might just want to do a simple IRA where you can do the deferral. There's a small match, 
probably don't want to get into a bigger complexity of a 401k where there's reporting requirements. And you really don't want to do the SEP IRA, which only has profit sharing as a, as a tool because you're not going to agree with your partner. You're going to say, you know, I need to save for retirement. I'm getting retirement. And they're going to say, I'm never retiring. I'm going to die early. Uh, and so those are decisions that you really need to meet with a professional, uh, your CPA, uh, financial advisor, and say, you know, let's design something that's going to work for the long term. Because these things, you know, sure, it's easy to set up an LLC. Sure, it's relatively easy to set up a retirement plan. But once they get going, they become big things. They have reporting requirements. They have uh, difficulty on how money can go in or out or rules about how old you are and how it's taxed and who watches it. And there's fees associated with these things. So many things in life are easy to create and hard to manage or, or, uh, or uh, dismantle. Um, retirement plans might fall in that group, I would say. All right. <laughs> Shane, what do you think? So in considering a partnership agreement, the first, uh, the first rule, I, uh, Shane's 101 rules, is to look at the position that you hold in the epiphany of wanting to form a partnership because you think that's the best avenue for you to take. If you are a greater part of the business, then that's the ownership split it should be. Uh, you're far better off having control of it, over 51%, and that secures your benefit in it. And uh, unless you're both working together side by side, then you put together a partnership agreement. Two standard clauses, the shotgun clause. The shotgun clause is very simple. If any, if any time one partner offers to buy out the other partner for a certain price, the partner being offered to be bought out has 24 hours to buy out that partner at the same price. Don't forget that clause. It's essential. Number two is I always set guidelines. One of the most important guidelines is profits. You, you, in a partnership, you should always have and know it you know, from the very beginning what the profit sharing is going to be at the end of the year. Establish that right away, again, because you want to secure by bonus, uh, whether you pay taxes on it or not, money for you to invest personally in the market if that's what you've turned to to build equity for your future. And finally, one of the great things about partnerships is the value that it creates personally for you. Um, partnerships become a personal part of your life as well as your professional life. So you always have the opportunity to share and care for one another and for each other, and not only personally, but with your families. And you can set up other guidelines in the partnership for things like education, where you can defer uh, education for your children. These are all things you're going to have to speak to a financial advisor, a banker, or and a lawyer and accountant. But you'll work through it and you can read about all of it, particularly after you get the advice. Someone gives it to you, go read about it. Go check it out. You can Google anything today or Bing it. So there you go. Simple, yep. complete, but time consuming. Another hour a night. Now you've got two hours a night to uh, invest time in the business and learning about it that you're running during the day and investing. Yep. Uh, the rule of business, uh, don't do anything in uh, the dark uh, <laughs> or don't do anything in the light you should be doing in the dark. So <laughs> that means uh, proposals are done at night. Uh, any bookkeeping is done at night. All, anything that doesn't um, require you to get out and uh, do your business is uh, must be done in the dark. The other thing uh, I want to hit on here that we talked about this a lot. If you have a partnership, um, it, it's not a good idea for it to be a 50-50 partnership uh, because, as Sheen pointed out, uh, someone has to make the final call. And usually it's the partner who brings the most to the business, the one who's most at risk. Uh, that might be money, might be expertise, might be whatever. Uh, without that person, the business would... Um, would not be, uh, you know, uh, profitable or in in uh, in good shape. So uh, I would I would uh, encourage you if you have a partnership, sit down, make one person fifty one percent, and they have the final say. And if you both agree to that, then um, yeah, there you are. So sounds good to me. Well, the so. other thing you can do if, mm -hmm. if 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 the person is I don't mean to interrupt you, but it's just a suggestion. If, if the person you're working with it, it has a problem with that, what you can do is in your partnership agreement, if you're 50-50 partners, 
that any decision, any decision, you both have to agree on or it does not go. So yeah. that's a simple way of, re of relieving any concern a person has. It says, no, no, we got to be 50-50 partners. Then you put it in your partnership, and I'll repeat it. Put it in the partnership agreement. Fine. Any decision we make has to be decided by both of us. It can't be decided clearly by one because now you've got a problem. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, coming down to the last word on this. I'm going to have a couple last words on this myself. One is that um, uh, you've got to think in terms of the $1,000 a month retirement savings rule of thumb. And what that means is that for every $1,000 you want to have in retirement, uh, you have to have $240,000 saved uh, because uh, the rule of thumb you need to uh, if you should draw five, four to five percent um, each year without affecting your principal. And in this case, uh, if you uh, if you have two hundred forty thousand dollars, five percent of that's twelve thousand. So that'll give you a thousand dollars a month. So every month you want to have a thousand bucks, you got to have at least two hundred forty thousand in retirement. So that's why we're talking about. You can't wait till you're 50 to think about this. You know, you should be thinking about this when you immediately, when you start your business, uh, get good advice, as Shane talked about, study, learn, uh, get a financial advisor like Mike to help you get started, get a good accountant to set up your bookkeeping correctly and make making sure that you're taking advantage of all the taxes. And the other thing I wanted to mention is the S&P 500 um, which started back in 1926 with 90 stocks, and uh, it's produced an annual re um, annual return rate of a, a 10 to 11 percent. And ever since 1957, when it went to 500, it's roughly 8 percent. But you've also got to take into account inflation in there as well. So, but you're still looking at five to six percent um, uh, for the S and P day in and day out if you want to invest in an s p index so what do you think mike is that good or bad advice <laughs> <laughs> uh you know the answer is always it depends right <laughs> yeah, I mean, it depends. You're, talking, you're right <laughs> we're talking about account structures uh, you know as a business owner you're talking llc sole proprietor we're talking jargon like 401k and things like that um i haven't really hit upon what people like, you know, think of mostly is just what do you own? Do you own stocks or do you own bonds or do you own cash or do you own something different? And the stock market provides all those as options. Uh, you can keep all of your retirement money in cash if you want. Every every plan allows for there to be a money market account. Um, but if you do that, it won't grow and it won't keep up with inflation and you'll end up with less money uh, and hopefully not running out of money. So Unless you are fortunate enough to have enough money where you don't have to take risk, um, and Tom help you get to some of that math on where that number might be, uh, you should be investing in things that will, over time will grow. And time is the tool that you have. You don't have clairvoyance. You don't know what's happening tomorrow in the stock market. Uh, hindsight, hindsight's great, but you can't make any money off of hindsight. It's about putting money at risk and having enough time to be able to manage that risk. Uh, and that's where that's where advisors work. That's where um, people that get it uh, find success because they understand that time will change. Uh, the stock market right now is very high. Um, in the future, it will be higher. In the near future, it may be lower. Uh, these are things that, that uh, affect emotions. And mostly for the show, we're just talking about good business practices and setting things up. And, and I think that in terms of partnerships, we've really hit upon some important things that you need to recognize because it's easy to set these things up. Sometimes it's difficult to live with them. Sometimes it's difficult to unwind them. That's why we put so much effort on the front end being make smart decisions, have good advisors. Uh, and as I led with my opening disclaimer is make sure you understand the nature of people's advice. Uh, if you go to somebody that sells insurance and ask, ask them if you think that you should have insurance, the answer is probably going to be yes. Uh, now, you probably should have insurance, but is that the right person to give you advice for retirement planning? Maybe. Okay. Uh, Shane, 
Final thoughts yeah, the on, one thing uh, that my final stuff? thought would be to all of you out there is time. There are all those expressions, money, you know, money, time is money, and it's time to, to get home. Time management is one of the most important things for you to sit down, whether you're a uh, person, uh, you know, you are single or particularly married and with children. Um, both of those issues on a personal basis are segregated from the rest of your day. So between the time you sleep, you eat, you shop, you cook, you spend time with the children, you spend time with your wife, you could be looking at anywhere from six to eight hours. We'll say eight. If you now throw in two hours a night to study business and do business paperwork, or you study the market and do investing, you're now up to 10 hours. If you work an eight hour day, you're now out 18 hours out of 24. Travel time involved and so forth. Always be conscious of time management. You'll have a less stressful life. You'll be a lot happier and you'll be able to work to live without having to be concerned about managing your time because it's not exclusive. It's limited. So have a great life. Learn to invest. Learn to provide for yourself in the future and uh, watch our uh, continued show to learn more twice a week all right all right uh, that's gonna wrap it up for us hey don't forget if you're watching us on uh, youtube you need to subscribe ring the notification bell so you will never miss another one of our podcasts we're here every tuesday every thursday at 10 a.m and uh, we're also uh, on uh, patreon by the way if you'd like to invest monetarily to support our efforts here uh, there is some expense involved in putting this thing on i might add uh, for uh uh, but uh, the uh, description, uh, how to get there, and uh, all of our plans are uh, will be in the description below. And um, we uh, thank you for that. Uh, Mike, uh, thanks for being here, of course. So we'll put Mike's contact information also in um, uh, our, uh, our banners below. And, uh, hey, don't forget... Uh, we have uh, past shows at KMMSAM.com. You don't have to sign up for anything. You don't have to do anything. Uh, just go there and listen. And also, uh, we are on uh, Saturday's radio, 8 to 11, uh, Mountain Time. And click listen now at KMMSAM.com. Again, you don't have to leave any personal information, no signups, no nothing. You can call us. You can text us, uh, just like any national radio show. So, Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, thanks for being here, Mike. Appreciate it. It was my pleasure. Yes, thanks, time is the man. most valuable resource. All right. Jane, thank you, as always. Always a pleasure. And uh, we will hear each other on Saturday, 8 to 11, <laughs> KMMSAM.com. Make sure you're there. All right. That's going to wrap it up for us today. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And we will uh, listen to you on the radio on Saturday.